Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we are working on the Razor Crest. This is a 172nd scale model put out by Round 2 under the AMT banner. And very excited to get started. This is a good looking model kit. We looked at most of the parts in our last video. Right now we're going to jump right in and start building. Hopefully we'll only have to do two videos to kind of get this fully built and constructed. We're going to start off today working on the engines, the cockpit, and hopefully get a lot of the main assembly done. All right, so the first thing I want to do is just the very small bit of altering the pieces to allow it to be lit. And we're looking at this step. Uh, if lighting your model, remove the plastic from the spaces shown all around parts 18 and 27. So this is what the part looks like unaltered, and you can see all of these areas in between those fins are solid. We want to open those up a little bit just so you see a little bit of light coming through those thrusters. So all I'm really doing is I'm using a triangular file across the top and then I'm running it across the bottom just to open up those spaces. So I'm going to take a few minutes off camera and I'm going to try and open up those spaces on both parts and then we can start assembling, painting, and lighting the engines. Okay, so we just have a little bit of modification done there, just to let a little bit of light shine through. We have taken our four parts, glued them together, so now we have two parts to be halves of the engine. We have our front pieces, and what we have to help light it up is they have a clear part that sits behind the rear engine bells. Now, what I've done is I've taken a little piece of sprue, just cut it off the kit sprues, and I plastic cemented it to that clear part and then shrink wrapped a big five millimeter LED. Real simple stuff here, uh, just to shine back at this clear part and light up the engine. So our next step is to get painting, light blocking paint on most of these parts. Um, and then some clear and some clear orange uh, to provide kind of that bright orange kind of fire thruster effect uh, for the Razor Crest engines. Right, we have light blocked the inside of the engine. We've gone to a glossy white to help the LED shine. Uh, we have our clear engine part done in a nice clear yellow. And we have painted this outside grill a silver chrome. And we're going to take a look at what it looks like with that LED turned on. All right, looking at this first, we have kind of two problems. The first is my color, which is looking a little bit green. It's greener in the video than in real life, but it is looking a little green. So the cool white LED and the yellow clear paint is turning a little bit green. Let's, we'll see what we can do to fix that. The other problem is on this clear part, uh, this is just a straight hole. There's no plastic there to catch the paint. So when we look at this, um, you can see that LED just shines straight through there. We're going to need to find something we can put in that hole to diffuse it uh, so that we don't just have the LED shining straight out the back of the ship. All right, but overall, we're making progress. I'm going to make a few adjustments and see what I can fix. This is attempt number two on the engines. Um, I have added actually just a dab of hot glue right there in the middle there so that my LED has something to kind of bounce off of to change the color temperature. Um, I did two things. I switched my LED to a warm LED instead of a cool one. The blue of the cool LED and the yellow was making it green. And also just to give it a richer yellow, I added yellow to kind of the entire section here 
So we'll close this up and see what it looks like on the second attempt. The temperature is better. It is much more yellow. Still, I'll probably have to add something to the very center there. That's still a little brighter than I want it. But absolutely making some progress here. Hopefully this is my last revision, my little experimentation here to get the engines the way I'd like them to look. I have added a little bit of clear red to make it much more orange. Hopefully that'll get the color temperature where I'd like it. I've also found that with the addition of those extra layers of paint, it wasn't quite as bright as I'd like them to be. These engines, when you see it in the show, really are powerful. They glow when the ship is flying away from you. Those engines are lighting up your TV screen. So I really want these to look bright. And we're going to close this up and see what it looks like. And hopefully this will be what we go with. All right, that temperature is absolutely more what I'm looking for. Very much a very gold light. Still a very bright center, so I might add a little bit of paint right there. And it is harder to see, um, but we are getting light through those cuts I had to make to the piece over here. So overall, I think I may fine tune it a little bit, but that's what I'm gonna do for the engines. Moving on to the cockpit, I'm trying to follow the box art as best I can. It looks like the floor and the bottom half of the walls are done in a light tan and the rest of it is done in kind of an olive green. Now the box does say that the pictures they're presenting are lighter so you can really see the color differences. I am also going to keep mine lighter. I think that in the dark cockpit where it's hard to look into the model anyways it'll be nice if those colors are just a little bit brighter so you can see the cockpit pretty well. After airbrushing the green sections and the tan sections, I did a little bit of hand painting on some of the raised surfaces. I did a little bit of a wash just to accent some of the lines like around the doors and differentiate some of these wires that are running across. And the next step is actually quite a few decals uh, for the cockpit. So obviously we have a handful of control panels they are going to be used around the cockpit. But also, all of these little blue markings, these are for the cockpit. These lines, these angled pieces, these little cross pieces, those are all parts of the doors. Those decals run in these areas. Those little stars are for the centerpiece of the door. Uh, the straight blue pieces fit in the door here. So we're going to decal... Um, most of these door panels and this is a decal for the floor of the cockpit we even have a decal for the mandalorian figure's head which is wonderful there was no way i was going to be able to paint that helmet so we're going to take a few minutes we're going to decal this up and then we'll look at the completed cockpit all right let's see how we did so here is my part compared to the box art I think a pretty good likeness. Once again, I know it is lighter than it should be, but with the dark cockpit, I think that'll work out all right. So that is one wall. Here is my floor. And here we have my other wall. And once again, very nice that we were able to mostly use decals um, to get the back wall detail done. Now, I am not a figure painter. If I wasn't kind of obligated um, 
for doing these reviews. I don't know that I would really show much of my figure work. Um, yeah, I, I'm not the best at it. That decal across the front is very nice, uh, but I put it on a little crooked. But yeah, there's my tiny 172nd scale Mandalorian. I also realized after I had painted it, there's actually a decal for the bandolier and for the belt. I tried to paint mine, but there's a decal so you could just paint the entire chest silver and decal over it. But there's my little Mandalorian. And here's my tiny Grogu or Baby Yoda in his little carrier that's glued to a seat. All right, to assemble it, you can see on this side, I've already glued the passenger seat to the wall. I've also glued this control panel to the wall. You do the same thing to the other side. So the control panel fits in here. And then the chair holding Grogu is going to glue it, be glued right into the wall like this. We've got the Mandalorian in his chair. We've got Grogu's passenger chair kind of right behind him. This main control panel is going to fit between these two walls. And then these rear bulkheads and doors will fit in the slots behind. So here's my completed cockpit for the Razor Crest 172nd scale. All right, I want to take a look at the guns that go on the side of the Razor Crest. One on the right, one on the left. I've put one together and it looks pretty good. So you can see a lot of nice detail across that, along the back. Some pretty simple seams that will need to be cleaned up. Uh, just really running a file across the top seam and the seam across the bottom, and then we'll be completely cleaned up there. Uh, but a very nice looking gun. Now, they are made up of seven parts. Now, the seven parts build together pretty easily. We're going to start in the very middle. And first thing that we do is it looks like we have a tiny universal greebly that's going to go in place right there. After we put that little greebly on, we can join both sides of the gun barrel together. And just a little bit of cement going across that seam. One more greebly goes right here. And then these new next two parts will wrap around the barrel. They do have locator pins so you can fit them in the right place. And the last part connects right up top here. And that is the other gun built. So let's take a look at the landing gear assemblies. The front landing gear is really simple. Uh, all of the linkage and accentuators are just done in two halves. So you glue those two together and then they are just going to glue themselves to the foot. So just three pieces to do the front landing gear. Really simple and easy. Now the rear landing gear is a lot more complicated. Now we start off a little bit of the same way. We have a little bit of linkage that snaps together like this, and that will fit on top of the foot. So that's a pretty easy assembly. And then we're going to have some linkage that will go from that foot to the main body of the ship. And once again, two halves are gonna to fit together. And then one more detail piece fits on the side. And then we have this piece. This is like an outside hatch that runs along the leg. You can see it's made up of three pieces. 
And then eventually there'll be one more plate that fits on the outside of that hatch. Now where things get complicated is trying to get all of this to line up and fit in the ship, keeping everything at the right angle. So this is keyed, so it'll fit in like this. And then you will probably want to make sure that's really well glued before you move on to the next step, because that is the right angle that you're going to try and keep things at. Eventually, you're going to want it to look like it does over on this side. We've already put a little hatch on here that shows that it's opened up. And then this tab fits into the model like this. And it should push through pretty well. And at this point, you'll probably want to, once again, get it very well glued. Hopefully you might be able to work on these two at the same time to keep them parallel and even. Is going to fit in with the tab into a slot here. And then finally you're going to glue it to the foot right down here. So you'll glue it down here and up on this tab. Let everything glue in place to keep everything nice and straight. And that will be the rear landing gears complete. While we have the glue drying there, we can see how much easier the front landing leg is. One little hatch to show it's been opened. And then this part's just going to fit in with those two locator pins there and be glued in place. With the front landing gear attached, we're now going to take our entire lower assembly, fit that onto the bottom of the ship. So here's where we are after our first day and a half of building the model. Man, I really felt I'd have a lot more done for the start of this video, um, but things have just been pretty complicated. So here we have our cockpit and of course not the perfect figure painting job, uh, but you guys can just kind of get an idea of what the parts are like and get an idea of how you might do things differently. There's Grogu back behind him on one of the other chairs. And here's a good look at those guns. And a look at what the landing gear looks like. Here we'll get a look at the front. And a look at the landing gear on the back. And of course, we have things figured out for our engine. So that's very much the kind of glow I want. I would like it if we could see just a little bit more through the fins, but overall, I like the color. I like the brightness. So that's where we're going to leave things today. On the next video, hopefully we'll get the rest of the construction done now that we have tackled most of the more complicated things like the guns, the landing gear, the cockpit, and of course figured out how we're going to light the engines. Uh, the next video will hopefully be the rest of the construction and working on the paint job for the ship. We'll be back with that probably next Tuesday or Wednesday. So thank you guys for following the channel. Hopefully this video gave you a good idea of some of the challenges and the way some of this model kit works. And once again, always thank you for following the channel. Thank you to Round 2 for sending us this review copy of the Razor Crest. And of course, make sure you're checking out All Scale Trek Forums, a wonderful place for all sci-fi modelers.